Hey guys, uh, this is Josh 8 Loop, and uh, what you're looking at is the um, early stages of construction of an 8 foot uh, diameter styrofoam uh, loop crystal radio. And this is a remake of another octagonal shaped. Uh, loop radio that I built uh, some years ago in Springfield, Missouri. And when we moved to Florida, uh, we had to disassemble it so we could move. Um, otherwise, it was just too big and too bulky to, to fit in the moving van and so forth. So I had to take it apart, and that just kind of broke my heart. I wasn't able to, uh, you know, just put it up on a, on a slab or a porch and uh, put my headphones on and, and tune through the dial. Um, so that, that really was uh, was not very fun having something that was uh, working very well and having to disassemble it and then of course that meant stringing wire up and running a ground if I wanted to go ahead and listen to the crystal radio. Well at that time I went ahead and, and kind of told myself you know the next time I build this thing it's going to be much better. It's going to have blitz wire, um, it's going to have the you know, least lost materials involved as it possibly can and what you see is a culmination of some ideas um, that uh, I had mental modeled and uh, this is actually the, the fulfilling of those ideas and uh, you know right now I've just got two sections of the loop put together um, and I just completed the PVC one inch um, square frame there um, and also the braces to the to the cross that you see in the center and um, so I'm just kinda just throwing everything together just to get an idea of size and and that thing stands the the tip of the top of that um, that started from rings about nine feet and I do plan on putting some casters underneath it eventually so that'll raise it up another three inches and so this loop when you know when it's outside running and so forth it should be a good 12 uh, to 14 inches above the concrete um, so that puts that capture area of the loop about 12 to 14 inches above the concrete which is good I mean it's best to be away when you're operating loop radios that are very well balanced and very well designed Q wise it's always great to be as far away from structures and uh, from concrete and metal as you possibly can and so that was why um, I chose to do that and I, I just simply couldn't go any taller on that frame uh, because an 8 foot loop is very large to begin with and adding anything um, to raise it up a, any farther than about 12 to 14 inches off the ground was just it was just uh, phenomenally sized so you know I had some uh, some sizing requirements to abide by so that we can make this somewhat livable and in fact as it is now is somewhat unlivable <laughs> it's huge I didn't realize just how large this thing was going to be uh, but you know this is uh, this is where it's at I won't need a antenna or ground because the outside loop wound with uh, six turns of wire um, you know will form the antenna ground circuit and let's see if I can show you a couple things up there is actually uh, some I believe it's polyethylene uh, or maybe I'm sorry it's polypropylene plastic and I thermoformed that into an L and I secured that I bent it with a radius on there so it follows the outside radius of the styrofoam I bent an L and so that will have some holes drilled in it at um, various places and I will have my Litz wire uh, that is Teflon, Teflon it's sleeved in a Teflon tubing um, I will put six turns of that on this loop and uh, the wire will actually lay right against the styrofoam now styrofoam is about 95 percent air and so uh, dialog dielectric loss uh, you know numbers like 1.03 and so, you know, I, I, I want to say it's, it's very close to Teflon. I mean, this stuff is just, and it might even be slightly better than Teflon, believe it or not. In fact, I believe it is. I want to say Teflon is, uh, is around 1.10. So this should do pretty well. Even though the wire will be basically 100% contact uh, to its Teflon sleeving and also to the styrofoam itself, it should have a very low loss. And so this thing should allow it just to, to reach um, phenomenal tank voltages. And, of course, the Q hopefully will be retained. I do not know what type of Q to expect. But you know what? Honestly, I will be happy with uh, three or 400 Q if I can keep it. Um, because a lot of times we create coils, maybe 1,000 Q. But once you load it down with the circuit and so forth, uh, you end up losing Q. Or if you 
you know, you hook up your antenna and ground and, and then that cue goes away uh, when it is actually functioning, so it doesn't do you any good. So if I can retain, well, you know, ho hopefully I'm, I'm shooting for uh, four to five hundred, maybe six hundred Q with this thing. I don't, I don't know to be honest with you, how this thing's going to pan out. But I do know that I'm going to use the best components, uh, which, um, you know, like I said, I'm using Litz wire. In this case, will be 66046 Litz uh, from Ming Mac. It's Chinese Litz. Um, it was a, it was a uh, very reasonable price, and so that's why uh, it drew me to that. Um, as opposed to the uh, Kerrigan Lewis, but I will be using that Litz. It's sleeved in um, Teflon tubing, a uh, very thin walled Teflon tubing, and that will give some weather resistance and abrasion resistance. Um, it will be six turns. It will be contra wound, so I'm using Ben Tung's method of achieving multiple inductances with the same coil. Um, and so I will have a band switch that will probably be mounted somewhere in here, uh, possibly to the frame or the side. So I'll have a, uh, a band switch that will change the inductance from high to low. Um, I'm expecting my overall inductance series configuration of the coil here to be around 380 microhenries. And so the parallel conf uh, configuration will be um, somewhat less than that, obviously, uh, because those two coils will actually be in parallel. And so um, that will be my band switch probably here, and then my tuning capacitor for the main loop will be um, there as well. And so that will give a nice, you know, around in this area I'll be um, tuning it. And so it gives some spacing from the metal frame of the capacitor uh, and the wire itself. Now the capacitor, I'm going to use a four gang capacitor. Um, each gang is 500 picofarads. And so when I run two together on both ends and then put the uh, termination points, the coil ends on each side, uh, basically I will be running wiperless and that will balance this loop and I've experienced that before on loops when you use a, a two gang capacitor, a thousand picofarads each gang and you hook it to the stators or if you use a, five, a four gang capacitor uh, attach two gangs together on one side and attach the other two and then connect your terminating ends of the coil to either stator, it basically uh, allows the frame of the variable capacitor to be at a very near zero potential. So it eliminates hand capacitance detuning, which is essential for um, not causing operability problems when you're running a, a crystal radio, or a loop crystal radio in this case. It also tends to balance the loop, and it's amazing what it does. It um, changes both both terminating ends of the loop uh, to a higher potential, um, but it's it's half of the total potential, and so it seems to balance it some to some extent to a great extent actually, and the loop itself is is very near zero potential, um, the center of the loop windings that is, and so it's a fantastic configuration. So I'm going wiperless on this because of the benefits of the balancing that I've experienced doing that type of configuration. And so, um, you know, we got a little ways to go. I've got to figure out how I'm going to um, secure these to uh, the styrofoam. And so right now it's just lashed up there with some painter's tape, same thing there. And, and so I will come up with a way to doll that up and uh, get those secure. And, you know, this loop probably weighs about 10 pounds of uh, styrofoam. And so there's a little bit of sag here. And so I'll probably just take some... Um, rope and uh, you know create a um, like a square in there and uh, and tighten that up with knots and so forth just to uh, to bring that up to kind of a, le a more level uh, configuration but this thing should be great it actually pivots um, so as you can see there's the uh, pivot point so you can actually take this loop and go this way and so um, some interesting experiments with sky waves and so forth can be conducted with this and uh, but I think it's going to be great man it's I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be the best loop I think uh, that I will have produced and uh, might be the best loop I ever produce. So I'm looking forward to it. I won't have to run an antenna wire ground. Um, it will be double tuned. Uh, the main loop here essentially is a large um, a large tuned um, signal capturing circuit. And so it pre-selects. Let's say your selectivity, you can get 30 kilohertz selectivity on the outer loop, which is essentially your antenna ground, so you have 30 kilohertz selectivity. Well, that becomes a lot easier to shave down to 10 kilohertz selectivity and below 
when you have a double tuned arrangement and so that I've experienced this before it is absolutely phenomenal when you have a tuned loop that is double tuned contrawound um, wiperless configuration on the main loop I mean you can just it's it's absolutely amazing your detector portion you can tune anywhere on the band and you can tune your main loop and when you hit that point where your uh, resonation um, you know resonating frequency is equal on the primary and secondary it is absolutely amazing I mean it just lights up and it puts a lot of volume um, and a lot of sensitivity in those uh, those headphones so I'm looking forward to this this is going to be great and so we'll uh, we'll keep uh, progressing as uh, minimal time allows so I thought I would share and document what I am doing here so hopefully you enjoy and hopefully uh, we all see this come together and uh, eventually get this thing on the air. Alright, catch you guys later. Bye.